I'm going to show you how I took my terminal game from this to this in just a few minutes. What's going on everyone? My name is James Q Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics that are a lot of fun. And in this video, I wanna show you how I did my terminal setup. Now I recently got a, uh, or had to set up a new computer on a Mac specifically uh, from scratch. And I kind of avoided doing any fancy terminal stuff. So I've been working with a pretty bland terminal for like two months. And uh, I really wanted to kind of take it to the next level. And working with your terminal and figuring out all the different pieces is actually a really tricky thing. Like I've done this a few different times on new computers and I never quite understand all the different pieces and how they fit in. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, the terminal that I use, which is Hyper. I'm gonna walk you through uh, ZSH, which now is the default on Mac and then adding Oh My ZSH on top of that. Then doing themes for ZSH, which become your kind of prompt style in your terminal. And then uh, customization inside of Hyper with themes and colors and fonts and anything really that you want to change, which is really cool. Then I'll also show you Fig, which I've talked about in a previous video to get some ridiculous IntelliSense and really take your terminal experience to the next level. So I'm going to walk through all of those. Uh, I am by no means an expert in customization of these things. So I'm curious as you watch the video, let me know what suggestions you have in the comments below and also uh, what things I might have missed, what things I may not know about that you use that you want other people to know. So make sure to leave those in the comments below as well. Now, I want to take a quick minute to mention the sponsor of this video, which is Contenda. Now, as a full time content cre creator, one of the most difficult challenges I have is how to repurpose content on different platforms and in different mediums. And Contenda can do a lot of that stuff for me. So Contenda can transform my videos into blog posts, including images, code snippets and more. It's actually pretty wild. In the conversation, I was like, I bet you can't do this, but it'd be really cool if you could get code snippets. They're like, yeah, we can do that. Uh, so it's really, really cool. Contenda is what I'm using to try to repurpose my content across YouTube, blog, Twitter, TikTok, et cetera, to have all this content that I already have make sense on other platforms. So I've got an exclusive link. If you want to give a try to Contenda, they'll do a piece of content for you with this exclusive link that I'll have in the description below. So make sure to check that out. Give Contenda a try and let me know what you think. All right. Uh, so I'm going to start with terminal. So I am on a Mac and I use the hyper terminal. Uh, so uh, this is available on Mac and Windows and uh, Linux as well. So you can get this on whichever one you're on. But one of the cool things for me uh, being a web developer about hyper is that it's built with Electron. Uh, so it's built using basic web technologies, HTML, CSS and JavaScript actually says that here. It's fully extensible, uh, has themes and plugins, and it's really easy to use. One of the cool things about it, uh, just like in VS Code, I'll actually show you an example of this. Uh, so let me open my settings and let me change the uh, font size and the terminal. Uh, I was actually just playing with this. So I can change the font size here to be 30, and this is all of a sudden gonna be much, much bigger. Hopefully you saw that jump. So if I ran a CD into code, so there's really, really big, and then back to 16 is really uh, a lot smaller. So that happens instantly. Uh, VS Code is also built with Electron. So we'll see how those things uh, take place when we make changes to the hyper config. See those uh, over here in the terminal as well. So hyper is really great. It's free. It actually, I had kind of forgotten this. Uh, I, I, I guess at one point I knew it, but it's created by the team at Vercel. So it is a product from Vercel. I'm a huge fan of uh, Vercel as well. So really, really cool. Hyper, we'll talk about uh, plugins and things and customizations here in a second. Now, uh, the other thing I want to mention is about ZSH. So Bash has historically been uh, the default shell on Mac for a long time now. And that has recently in the last several years, this article was in 2019, been replaced by ZSH. Now, ZSH was a, a fan favorite, I think, of developers for years already at the time and uh, became so popular, I guess. And there's maybe specific features. People can let me know in the comments below, like why specifically this happened. But uh, it's the default uh, shell on your Mac when you get set up. So uh, that's really cool. And then on top of that, there is Oh My ZSH, which unleash your terminal like never before. It's a delightful open source community driven framework for managing your ZSH configuration. So it's being able to uh, manage that stuff in a streamlined way. It gives you uh, plugins and themes and other stuff, which is really cool. It also, uh, yeah, like I said, gives you themes that you can customize specifically like the prompt. Uh, so the stuff on the left of your terminal as you go to type stuff in. So that's how people get like information about their 
uh, the status of their branch that they're on, which branch they're on for their GitHub repository, et cetera. Uh, here's the hyperstore uh, themes. And then I'm going to use, um, I'm gonna use the Cobalt 2 theme for all of this. So I'll kind of show you how to set this up. Uh, there's also a tweet, I'll include a link to this. Um, I mentioned you could comment below with any suggestions and stuff. If you wanna uh, look for other people's suggestions, there's a ton of people that commented on this tweet. So I'll include a link to this tweet uh, in the description below as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I've got hyper terminal uh, set up and the things that I have configured, um, notice I have this like folder icon down here. If I CD into code, also the IntelliSense that comes from fig, ridiculously cool. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, so I can CD into code, CD into James Q quick site. And notice here that this is showing me uh, my folder directory and in the bottom right hand corner, it shows me which branch I'm on. In addition to in the command uh, or in the prompt itself, it's also showing me which branch, uh, which is pretty cool. Now I decided to go for a pretty minimal look here without showing the entire um, uh, current working. Oh, interesting. I have to figure out why see, I think I messed up something with my path. So maybe don't follow everything I do. Uh, so I got to figure that out. But, but anyway, it's not showing me my full path here. It's just showing me my folder. I know my folders well enough that I don't need to show the whole thing, I think. Uh, but having the branch that I'm on is uh, is nice. So that's the basics of what that looks like. Let's go into uh, ZSH. So installing uh, ZSH, uh, actually, sorry, by default, it's already there for you. And then you get into oh my ZSH. So you can install oh my ZSH uh, with the instructions here. When you get that, now you have a .zsh uh, file, and this is gonna be inside of your home directory. Uh, so you won't see dot files by default. So you'll have to do like an ls-la if you're in the terminal to see them. And then uh, you can see the uh, .zsh uh, rc. So I could also uh, go into vi if I wanted to, .zshrc, and look at that. So that stuff will be the same as what I have open in VS Code. What I recommend is that you do code.zshrc and open that up inside of VS Code like I have it. So I probably got some things to figure out with the path. I think I've got more I just need to add. Uh, somebody can maybe help me out if you have a good suggestion on how to do this. I don't know why it's not picking up the default stuff from uh, Bath Bash. Maybe I need to pick these up too. Anyway, I'll figure that out. Uh, but down here in this section, I've got stuff for themes. Now I decided to go with the GoZilla theme for uh, uh, oh my ZSH. All right, so there it is. So I can include a link to this one, uh, this one below as well. And I forget how, how did I actually install this? I think I may have found it on one of these top 12. I think this was it. So I looked through this article, I can include a link to this. I looked through this article to find the Godzilla one and uh, went through and uh, just set the theme to Godzilla. And the cool thing about this, again, is that it's super minimal. So if we look inside of here, it just shows like folder and then branch. You look at a lot of these other ones that people like, they're showing the entire folder path and they're showing other things. I just, I wanted this to be a little bit more minimum or minimal. So another thing that I've also done is the uh, Cobalt 2 theme. So this one I had historically for a long time. And by the way, when I uh, change this, I need to either run a command. I think you could do like a source or something, but I'm just gonna quit this and open hyper up again. So now this is the West Boss uh, Cobalt 2 theme. So I'm actually using the colors in the terminal uh, in hyper with Cobalt 2. I'll show you that in a second, uh, but this is the prompt. Uh, so the only thing I don't like about this is this uh, shows me now the uh, full path. So it shows me the branch, it gives coloring, it gives a little icon there, that's cool. I uh, might go back to this, but it shows the whole path and I really uh, just don't want that. I, I just need the folder name. Uh, so anyway, so that's that. And I've been using uh, Godzilla, so I'll just comment this out. And it's really cool uh, with this RC file because now again, I can just restart hyper and now I've got my new uh, prompt up there. So that's cool. I don't think there's a lot of other stuff. I don't think I really added much uh, else in here. Uh, the plugin, I think the Git plugin comes by default. Um, so there's plugins that you can go and research and stuff. Again, if you have recommendations, let me know. But if I CD into code and then uh, James Q Quick Site and uh, do GST, for example, uh, that's a Git status. So it's the equivalent of running Git status. It's a shortcut. Uh, also, LA being a shortcut for LS-LA. I think all of that stuff comes with, <clears throat> excuse me, comes with uh, oh my ZSH as well. 
So some really cool, uh, really cool just shortcuts in there. Maybe it comes with just ZSH and then uh, the Git plugins comes with oh my ZSH. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but I use those all the time. They're super, super handy. Also, if I want to go back to directories, instead of doing dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, I can do dot, 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 and that'll take me back to my home directory. So some neat stuff in there with uh, ZSH and oh my ZSH. Now, the other thing I want to show you, and this is uh, really cool because it gets like really customizable, customizable really fast, is the hyper.js file. So again, if I do an LA, you'll see that there's a dot hyper uh dot js file in here so i recommend opening this in vs code unless you're really good with vi and you code uh dot hyper uh, js open that file up and now you can edit this almost with a similar experience of what we just had in vs code a second ago so if i want to change this to a really big font i could change that uh much bigger notice it changes like really quickly i can change the font weight to bold it's it, like a subtle difference there but it did change uh line height i could change to 10 and that looks terrible don't want to do that so let's go back to one uh letter spacing i could space these out a little bit more uh probably not what you want either cursor color cursor accent color cursor plink etc uh you can also do um some custom css I kind of ignore this because i was playing around and didn't really accomplish what i wanted but i did install a package or a plugin let me see what the plugin is hyper opacity and then uh, you can set the opacity of your editor. Uh, so notice how you can kind of see through that now. I thought that would look cool, but it seems more distracting than I would want it to be, to be quite honest. So I've just let this uh, left this at one. So a couple other things I have, the hyper material theme, uh, the shades of purple uh, hyper, this one, uh, they actually take precedence over each other in terms of the order. So I may, there we go. So that'll switch over to the purple one. This is from a mod of waste, which is really nice. So I kind of toggle between uh, between those two, Cobalt 2 and Hyper. Uh, the status line, that's the one at the bottom that shows the status of your GitHub repository and in the folder that you're in. So that's one that I added. Uh, the fig stuff, again, I'll come back to this. That's taken care of for me. Uh, the Wicked Border, this is a customization for uh, the Cobalt 2 theme. So you can change this color and that's the outline of your terminal. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, so a bunch of different uh, cool stuff in here. Again, all you have to do for these plugins, uh, you can list them in here. You can also do a hyper install and then you can type in the theme. So hyper material theme that will install that theme. It says it's already installed. Uh, it's already listed in here. Again, your themes take precedence of the order in the array. So the last one, if it's a theme, will take uh, precedence. So I'm curious if you have any additional hyper uh, plugins or favorite themes. Let me know those in the comments below as well. I love to see this kind of stuff. It's really interesting. The last thing I want to show you is actually going back to, um, or one of the last things I want to show you is actually going back to the uh, Cobalt 2 theme. So let's uh, quit Hyper and open it back up. Somebody let me know in the comments what that source command is. If I CD into code and James Q Quick site and uh, look at this icon, and I think this icon as well, um, so to get that set up, you have to have Powerline fonts installed. Now, this is not, again, this is not something I'm super well versed in. Uh, Powerline goes back to something with VI. So it's something, some way to get fonts and font icons and stuff into your terminal. I can't, I like, let me know in the comments what exactly it means. Anyway, uh, so the way it works is you clone uh, this GitHub repository, you run the install script, and it does all the things uh, for you. You can also, it looks like on Linux, you can run a sudo apt-get uh, to do that. But I cloned the repository, I then ran the install uh, command, and then you have access to all these different fonts that will be supported or will support these icons. So in mine, uh, and this is a hyper setting, again, it's kind of confusing what lives where. The hyper setting that I have is I'm using Inconsolata for Powerline. So that is a font that allows me to see these icons. If I were to change this, to get rid of this one and just do consolas. Notice, I guess this icon stays, but that one goes away. So you actually, I've seen this on my terminal setup in the past and other people set up where I didn't have that installed, uh, an appropriate power line font. So after you have that set up, then you'll get the icons and you can choose from any of these uh, on here. I think actually the Meslo one, let's do uh, Meslo. I think that's the default one that Hyper comes with. So you can do Meslo or like, again, anything in there. Pretty cool. So I love being able to customize this stuff from inside of here. Uh, I like being able to add uh, the themes in ZSH for your prompt. 
I would actually love to build one myself. I'd actually love to build this one and then uh, change it to where it only shows the current directory. Uh, I just have never done that myself. So uh, what did I do? Let's go back to this. There we go. I don't know why. Didn't Meslo work a second ago with the icons? No, it didn't. Interesting. Anyway, uh, so in Consolata, there will work. So that's super cool. Uh, ZSH, Hyper, Oh My ZSH, plugins, themes for both. Again, if you have recommendations, uh, let me know. And then lastly, I'll take you to uh, FIG. So that IntelliSense that I get in here uh, for what directory to get to, or if I do NPM run, and then uh, it'll show me what commands I can run based on the package. I mean, it's ridiculously cool. Has IntelliSense for all different types of CLIs. It's amazingly cool. Uh, so next generation command line. So it has this autocomplete stuff. You can also do dot files and secrets in here, which this is special. You can also do this with teams and share them across teams. Wild. Uh, workflows, which are basically like functions, like you can run a function that you define to do certain things. Uh, SSH credentials, plugins, so many things in here. It's really wild. So FIG is like, I think the number one tool that you have to install in your terminal to do a lot of really fun and cool stuff. Um, so if you have any favorite FIG plugins, uh, let me know in the comments below as well. Anyway, that is my terminal setup. I finally uh, spent a couple hours yesterday, like redoing the terminal setup because I hadn't after setting up a new computer. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. Um, I've always kind of struggled with what different customization goes where and how the power line stuff fits in and what goes with oh my ZSH and what goes with hyper. So anyway, hyper is the terminal itself built on Electron, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You can customize it with the hyper.js file. Uh, ZSH is the shell that comes by default on Mac. You can layer on top of that Oh My ZSH, which is a framework for doing those configurations. The themes in Oh My ZSH are going to do the prompt themes, and then you may need powerline fonts to get special icons and stuff. Hopefully that's a short enough, easy enough breakdown for what all this stuff is. And then lastly, layer on top of Fig for amazing IntelliSense, as well as other uh, really cool features. I didn't even show the actual uh, dashboard so I can bring this over. So there's a dashboard that comes with it uh, to do a bunch of stuff too. So you can go and check all that stuff out. Anyways, hope you enjoy the video. Let me know what other suggestions, what things I'm missing, what are your favorite features and plugins and all that kind of stuff that you're using. Let me know all that stuff in the comments below. Thank you for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next one.